Hello there everybody, Sam Strange here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another Hornby unboxing. So today I'm going to be unboxing this very, very beautiful locomotive, which is known as the Thompson Class B1. And of course, as you can tell, it's in this beautiful LNER green, although presumably this was modelled just after the switch over to British Railways in 1948. So actually you have got British Railways written on the tender there, but for all intents and purposes, this was still at that time, presumably in history, still painted in the LNER colours, which is very, very beautiful. So I bought this one from Hattons just after Christmas. It cost me £87, which which obviously is a bit, well, quite heavily discounted from the RRP. But uh, I thought that was a really, really good price because obviously it's quite a large locomotive. It's got a reasonably sophisticated paint job on it. And uh, obviously we've all seen them and we all know that they're fairly good quality and uh, fairly good runners as well. So uh, yes, this is quite exciting actually because the only other B1 models that I've got already are some old Backman ones, which I'll show you later on. They must be about at least 20 years old, I would have thought, maybe even uh, older than that. They are the old split chassis version and the details very nice on them, but obviously they're a little bit outdated by modern standards. So I really want to see how this compares and uh, hopefully this will uh, impress compared to those. Interestingly, I've also seen that there are some pre-orders open for a new Backman B1 which is obviously coming out soon and I'd be really interested to know whether it is actually a new tooling or just an updated version of the old tooling that I've already got. Um, obviously it will be on a different chassis because Backman don't create split chassis models anymore but either way it would be interesting but obviously that's not what we're talking about today. So today we're going to open this Hornby one, really looking forward to it because it's been quite a long time since I've just done a good old Hornby review so I really hope you're going to enjoy it. Okay let's get started. And as I always seem to say, it seems absolutely ages since I've just opened a regular Hornby tender engine box. But uh, there's the packaging anyway. You've got the lovely illustration of the engine on the front there, which is number 61310, if I read that right upside down. I hope I did. And if I show you the end of the box, you can see that the product number for this is R3338. British Railways Class B1 61310. So that's that. And if I just flip the box over, I'll show you what's on the back. So you can see that by the BR, this was classified as a 5MT, which sort of makes sense for the size of the loco. And then in the middle there, you've got a whole, you know, there's a five, five or six paragraphs really there of history just about the locomotive. So if you want to read that, as always, feel free to pause it and read it. And then on the far end of the box, my very favourite part, this is the little diagram that Hornby presumably had drawn uh, while they were designing the the tooling for the model and as you can see this is dated 2010 which is at the date it was drawn <laughs> So uh, that means that possibly the tooling could be up to eight years old, which is, uh, you know, fairly old, really. Um, but uh, hopefully it will still impress, and I'm sure it will. So, uh, yes, you can tell I'm excited about this one uh, because this is kind of my uh, favourite sort of thing to do, just to open up a beautifully coloured uh, steam loco. So let's do that right now and uh, take a look. So there she is inside the block of ice, and I do love the Hornby packaging, don't you? Just look at that. Right, let's get the block of ice out. There we go. And as always, you've got this little operating and maintenance instruction booklet here. So I'll show you that very briefly. So, yep, that's just the front. Nothing much to see there. Inside, very, very nicely drawn. As you can see, you've got a lot of detail there. Shows you all about lubrication, accessories, removing the body, um, close couplings, it says, uh, DCC sound and uh, DCC fitting. So really all the essentials that you need. So it's nice that they've provided all that. And I will have a look through that at some point if I, well, when I come to service her. There's no doubt that will be useful for body removal and whatnot, but normally they're fairly straightforward anyway. Okay, let's take this block of ice apart then and take a look inside. So the first thing I can see is quite a heftily sized detail pack, which is quite interesting. So let me show you that. So as you can see, it looks to me like you've got cylinder drain cocks in there, which is nice. Uh, looks like you've got brake rods in there, obviously, vacuum pipes, a few different bits of steps. Um, so yeah, quite a hefty detail pack, and obviously the loco would be quite a lot better for it if you decided to fit that so yep nice to have that is and now let's get the loco out then let's see oops bits of packaging falling over got this little bit of plastic on top of the engine to keep it secure so that's quite good stops the paintwork getting ruined I suppose and if I lift this out here you have it 
Right, absolutely lovely. Now, she is fairly heavy, but uh, it is immediately obvious that most of the, well, nearly all of the bodywork and the running board is made of plastic. So, uh, in a way, I'm sort of glad I didn't pay more than £87, pounds, uh, because, you know, if it cost a lot more than that, you would be wondering why, being that it's uh, all made of plastic. But it looks like a really nice quality model, and just look at the paintwork on that. Absolutely beautiful. Now, what I have had to do is glue the NEM coupling into the tender there, because uh, the coupling was kind Kind of quite badly deformed when I first opened it and it just kept dropping out the loco would not retain it so uh, very poor quality coupling on that and if I took it out which I can't now because it's been glued in but if I took it out and flipped it over you would see how badly warped the plastic was on that so you know a small quality problem there but touch wood she seems to run okay which I will show you later on but other than that just look what a beautiful model and for a really really good price I think as well so let's get her up onto the white background in just a second but obviously first of all here's a little bit of information on the B1s. So the B1s were designed by Edward Thompson, and that's where you normally get a boo or a hiss, uh, of the LNER and was introduced in 1942 for medium traffic on the railway. With a total of 410 built, the B1s were the second most numerous class of 460s ever built in Britain, and possibly the most numerous, as a guess, would have been the Black Five, I would imagine. The B1 was supposedly intended to be the LNER's equivalent to the Black Five, a multi-purpose class with excellent capabilities, of course, and they were also extremely cheap to produce, which was very, very important, essential, really, during World War II when these were built. Interestingly, the B1s were built using identical parts to other LNER locomotives, including the boiler of the B17, the wheels of the P2, and the cylinders of the K2. So once again, you can see that they've economised on designing new parts there. Two of the class have been preserved, while very sadly the rest were scrapped. So there she is then, the absolutely beautiful Hornby B1 in this beautiful LNER slash Doncaster Green. I don't know if Doncaster Green is absolutely the right term for this, but uh, it's certainly LNER Green, if that's what you want to call it. Presumably in real life, this is a snapshot of the loco just before presumably it would have been painted into Brunswick Green or BR Black, as was the standard for British Railways really following the late 1940s. Uh, so this would have been really her last couple of years possibly uh, in such a beautiful, in my opinion, uh, LNER livery. And, uh, you know, say what you like about Thompson, you might not like him too much, and certainly I'm not his biggest fan, but you have to admit that this thing is absolutely beautiful. And I'm not shy to admit that Hornby have done a really, really good job with these. So let's take a look at the loco first of all then, and as I always do, I will start by looking at the paintwork. And as you can tell, the paintwork on this one is absolutely exquisite. For a long while, Hornby seemed to struggle with the LNER greens um, on the P2, for example, um, there's a little bit of dodgy paintwork going on, certainly with mine, and with my A3 Book Law, the, uh, the, the striping on the boiler isn't absolutely fantastically applied, and there are a few other examples like that, but uh, not with this one. As you can see, the lining has been really pretty much faultlessly applied along the boiler there, and the model really is a lot better for it. As you can see, the running board also has this beautiful red lining on it, which is really lovely to see, and that red lining is carried over onto a few other elements as well, including the steam chest just there as you can see steps and things and also on the tender which we'll talk a little bit about later on there are also lots of painted details as well such as these little uh, stopcocks I'm not exactly sure what they are and I know people have told me about that before so sorry and uh, there's this little assembly here just uh, behind the smoke box there which has also been picked out into gold and that is something very noticeable and uh, that's something that sticks in my mind as uh, being a detail that isn't picked out on the Backman versions certainly the Backman versions that I've got so that's good to see the smoke box door doesn't have any painted detail picked out on it, but as you can see there is a separately fitted smoke box dart on there, which is a really good sign of quality generally. On the side of the cab you can see you've got more of this beautiful white lining which goes around the sides of the cab and also around the windows which are also glazed, another excellent feature of the model. And the running number there, not in the LNER font anymore, 61310, very nicely applied. And below there what is presumably the builder's plate, a very very tiny builder's plate on this particular one, which as you can see may be legible but it is a really really tiny one. The front facing windows on the cab have also been glazed and around them you can see is a beautiful gold lining which really does stand out nicely I think. The separately fitted detail on this model is also very good. As you can see up here the, the whistle and safety valves are separately fitted and they are made of metal and I think that's a really really nice touch. And similarly the reversing rod is also a metal piece which is great to see. And you know I always think this, when you see a little bit of metal work on the model, whether it be a cast, a die cast, running
cooling board, um, a die-cast body, or even just uh, the, the die-cast metal whistles and safety valves and uh, reverser rods like that. It really goes to show where your money's gone. It shows that you've bought a quality item. And I normally feel when a model comes and it is entirely plastic, it just feels a little bit as though you haven't got your money's worth. But certainly when you see metal on a model like this, not only does it bring out that realism, but it really gives you that little bit of a, it's probably just a psychological thing really, but it just makes it feel better value for money. As you can see the buffer beams are nicely detailed with also metal buffers which are sprung, let me show you that. Yep, sprung buffers which is nice to see. And just above there not only have you got lamp irons separately fitted, but you've also got lamps on them which is something that Hornby liked to do during this period. I believe the L1 tank had uh, lamp irons just like that as well. And I won't forget to show you the wheels because just like the P2 and other LNER locos from Hornby, the outer rims of the wheels have been picked out with that white lining which is really really superb to see. Okay, last thing then, let's take a look inside the cab. And the cab details themselves have been picked out really, really nicely. I love that. You can even see the detailing on the gauges there, which is absolutely incredible to see. So, really good marks for the cab there. Um, there isn't any sort of wood panelling effect on the floor or cream painting in the background. I don't know whether that was a thing on the B1, but it's certainly not something that is a thing on the model. So that's the loco. Let's take a quick look at the tender, which I always think looks quite unusual because you normally expect to see LNER printed onto a tender that looks like this. But in this case, we've got British Railways um, for reasons that I've mentioned already. Uh, but as you can see, that's been really nicely printed onto there, which is great to see. And you've also got that white and black lining uh, going around the whole tender, just like on the loco. And as I touched on earlier, you've also got the red lining going around the uh, the underframe which again is just a real sign of elegance and that's something I've loved on all of the LNER locomotives and Hornby tend to quite reliably uh, represent that which is great to see. Around the back once again you've got more lamp irons with uh, separately fitted lamps on them which is nice to see. More sprung buffers, obviously you've got the NEM pocket and I will show you the coal because uh, the Hornby coal is uh, pretty reliably good actually every time and uh, this one is no exception. As you can see it's quite finely scaled and uh, quite nice Nicely and conveniently, if you're someone who likes to do this, you can remove it and either have an empty tender, I don't know if you wanted to model it in a shed or something like that, I don't know, or you could put your own crushed coal into there and then you could make it as realistic as you like. But as it comes in the box, I would say the coal is fairly realistic in the first place. So, as you can see, for a tooling that is potentially up to 8 years old, the detail on it is really quite impressive, and certainly for £87, true it doesn't have some of the metal parts like the modern ones do, the running board for example is, uh, we, well, it tends to be metal these days on uh, new tools, but uh, certainly the weight isn't a problem, but the price of £87 actually for what you get is pretty good, and you know, who knows, if the running board had have been made of die-cast metal, we could have been adding £20 to the RRP, which would have made all the difference. So actually. I'm really happy with this one. I think it's very good and the quality is pretty good as, as well as a general rule. So let's take her down onto the track then and take a good look at how she performs. All right, let's do it. So there she is then, Hornby's beautiful B1 down onto the track there. What an elegant loco she really, really is. Anyway, she's about to be coupling up to some ex LNER coaches, and there are six of those, so that's quite a good test of her abilities. If she can pull those easily, I think it will be safe to say that she uh, has good pulling abilities. Anyway, let's see how she does at slow speed to start with then. Now, I've been a little bit nasty and put her on an express point. In fact, the dead spot is just there. So if she does this crawl very, very nicely, uh, you know, good marks. Uh, the one thing I will say is though I have had to adjust the pickups on the loco because for some reason on not this express point but the one further down she was stopping on it at to almost every speed so goodness knows how you know that was an issue because she does have full tender pickups as well but uh, it was a problem so I've, uh, I think I've now solved it but uh, yeah we'll have to see how it goes hopefully she'll be fine though okay let's give her a little bit of slow speed and she has been running already so that isn't something to worry about there she goes backwards now, I don't know if this comes across, but it's not terribly smooth at that speed. Obviously, once you get to that sort of speed, it's much, much better. But uh, at the very slowest speeds, it's a little bit sort of jerky, which is to be expected, really. Let's try and go a bit slower. It's actually very good. Very good. In fact, excellent, if not for the issues on the points. But uh, if you look now, I don't think you'll... Notice any problems on the points? I, I wouldn't have thought since I fixed the pickup issue. Yep, 
as you can see, absolutely fine. But if I bring her forwards onto the other set of points, we'll see if she does stop. Here she comes then towards the other set of points. Just out of interest, really, I'm doing this, just to see if she does stop. It was normally when the back wheels reached the dead spot, so we'll see. Almost there. Yep, she's stopped. It's ludicrous, really, because every wheel, except from the front bogey wheels, have got pickups on them. But, uh, yeah. It's totally dead, look. There we go, it's back again. So, very strange. Let's see if she does it in reverse. Yeah, it's odd. I don't know about that. I might have to take the pickups out again. Obviously, at the high speed, then, she was fine. Okay, let's couple to the coaches. Here we go. Nice, steady coupling there. Okay, shall we see if that's worked? I heard the coupling hooks engage, so hopefully it has worked. Let's see. And yes, she can pull them. Okay, I'll get her up to a good speed so that she's not going too slow over those points, and I'll show you what else is going to be running. So on the middle line, I'm going to be running my Backman B1, which is quite an old one, and I think the actual tooling goes back to the replica railways days, which is probably 1990s. And uh, oh, let me bring in a little bit further. And uh, yes, so as I say, Backman are re-releasing a B1. Uh, later on this year, I think it will be. But as you can see, this particular version of mine isn't all that detailed compared to the Hornby one. So I will be really, really interested to see how Backman's new release of this does um, in comparison. I would hope for the RRP that it's at least been updated, if not completely retooled from this version. But uh, looking at this version, as you can see, um, no metal reversing rod, that's an obvious point. No actual lamps fitted to the lamp irons, of course. You can't see it from here, but there is no internal cab detail or anything like that. And also the wheels don't have any lining on them or anything like that. And quite noticeably also the, uh, the boiler banding, the lining on the boiler, is definitely nowhere near as nicely applied as the Hornby one. And finally, no sprung buffers on mine. So yes, I would expect Backman uh, have improved this since, uh, since mine was made. But uh, I suppose only time will tell. Anyway, let's get her going. There we go, and she's got some goods as you can see, some empty wagons there, and an old LNER brake van on the back. Okay, let me show you what's on the inside line. So here it is, this is my other Backman B1, and uh, this one is in an early BR black livery as you can see, and uh, this one actually, come to think of it, does have a few um, improvements on my earlier um, sort of uh, BR green Backman one. This one does have sprung buffers as you can see, so they have been updated and actually the paintwork has been quite nicely updated on this one too but it is still just a split chassis model so uh, yes, it will be very interesting and if anybody's got a more recent Backman B1 let me know what it's like, let me know if it is an improvement on these but anyway, there's that, so enjoy the running session see which other engines you can spot and there is an odd one out today so uh, let me know in the comments, if you spot it, what it is so very clearly this Hornby one is a thoroughly beautiful model, really really well detailed and very very good value for money I would say. Um, not very often I say that but uh, credit where credit's due, this is beautiful. And as you can see no visible slowing down at all on Gordon's Hill with six coaches. Uh, so as I say I think seven would be just fine. Um, more than seven I don't know, if you have a perfectly flat layout then I would expect so yes. But I would estimate that around 7 is probably her limits on my layout at least. And here comes the Backman one, which weighs about the same, the pulling power is about the same. Except she does have that split chassis. So, uh, you know, if you want a cheap one, these only cost me about £30 a piece, perhaps a little more, more like 35 But uh, bear in mind that they are quite prone to that axle failure. And also if you want to DCC fit them, which I haven't, if you want to, it's very, very difficult, and a bit dodgy as well, because you have to isolate the motor, which is easier said than done. But touch wood, my Backman ones are pretty much okay, but uh, just bear in mind that mine are quite old. I don't have a date on them, specifically, but I estimate that it's 10 to 20 years, probably, probably almost certainly closer to 20, and there's the other one. I don't think that one's quite as old, but uh, still fairly old nonetheless.
So here are my ratings then on the absolutely lovely Hornby B1. Detail, I've given it 5 out of 5. I feel 5 is a little bit maybe too generous, but then I also felt that 4 wasn't generous enough. So I have given it a 5 because I've given it 4s elsewhere, as you can see. Yes, the detail is really quite impressive, and especially for the price. Uh, I really can't fault it. Power then, 4 out of 5. As you can see right now, she's pulling a rake of 6 coaches without wheel slipping, so I have no doubt that she'd be able to manage 7. So really the pulling power is very, very good. Although, of course, it's not absolutely outstanding, um, as some locos might be, the Ren ones, for instance. Slow speed then, I've given it 4 out of 5. Yes, the slow speed is very nice and controllable. Amazingly, she did stutter a little bit on one of my express points and I had to take her off the track and sort of adjust the pickups and clean the wheels before she would stop doing that. But other than that, the slow speed is pretty good and, uh, you know, she's not going to do the fantastic slow speeds, but it's certainly deserving of a 4 out of 5, I would say. Quality then, 4 out of 5. Generally, the quality was very, very good, actually, other than the slight issues with the coupling I had at the back and a couple of other details which were slightly badly applied, for example, the little doors on the sides of the cab. Not exactly sure what they are, but they're a little bit wonky. But generally, I think this model is a really good example of a compromise between quality and detail, and yet a model that is still relatively cheap to produce and relatively affordable to buy as a customer. And I think that is something that Hornby have done really well with this model, but not necessarily something that they've done well so much in recent years. They tend to land on one of two extremes. One extreme being they create a model that is absolutely fantastic and out of this world, except the price is so high that it really doesn't appeal to the average person. And then the other extreme is that they create something that really is quite cheap to manufacture. Still quite expensive to buy, but when you get it you just feel, oh, well, this isn't too great. Very rarely do they seem to land anywhere in between these days, but this B1 absolutely does, and those are the models that I like the best. Value then, for £87, I thought that was a really, really good price. Of course, Hornby's RRP is quite a lot higher than £87, but certainly for the price I paid, I've given that 4 out of 5. Very, very good indeed. So overall then, that is 8.56 out of 10. A good score. Let's put her into the ranking. That places her 5th, just above the Backman Mavis and below the Backman 4F. Yep, yeah, really happy with this one. She's beautiful. There's something about the l &ER 460s that I've always found really, really impressive and attractive. And I think this particular model conveys that perfectly. So let me know what you think in the poll. Do you think £87 is about the right kind of money for a loco like this? Or maybe are you willing to pay a little bit more for your models? Or equally, do you think it's a bit too much and you'd rather be paying less? I'd be interested to hear what you guys think. To be honest, I think £87 hits the spot for me. I think uh, that's about right. And if every model was priced like that, I'd be a very happy chappy. Okay folks, well that's going to be just about it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this review as much as I did. You can probably tell by my voice uh, how much I've enjoyed today. So uh, yes, really nice to have one that uh, triggers my enthusiasm and uh, you know one that's just nice and enjoyable to film and enjoyable to run. Yeah, really happy with that one. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video too, just let me know by uh, leaving me a comment because I really do love it when you guys uh, get in touch. And if you feel like it, leave me a like as well because that really does help the channel. But for now, that's all I've got to say. So thank you for your company as always and I will see you very soon. Here's the Wall of Fame, by the way. If you'd like to have your picture put up on there, just email it to me at samstrains@outlook.com and uh, I'll print those out and uh, show them during live streams. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. Thank you, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the review, of course. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Cheers, everybody.